37, verse 25, when you have it, signify such by saying, Amen. Amen. The Bible reads as follows for your hearing. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Once more and again, I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You may have your seeds. One verse on this afternoon. I don't even know why I brought this up here because I don't have any notes and I'll pray with me. Amen. But I'd like to use for a topic, if you grant me your indulgence, uh, as we begin to unpack this particular pericope of Scripture, uh, if you would grant me your attention and your indulgence for but a few moments, I'd like to speak to you from the topic between the promise and the product. Oh, wow. Between the promise and the product. Right. Do I have a church in here? You preach. Yeah. Between the promise and the product, coming from Psalms 37, verse 25. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I, 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 this, this, chat, this scripture comes from the book of Psalms. Psalms, I like the book of Psalms. Psalms is uh, the largest book of the Bible. Psalms 119 being the largest <laughs> chapter of the book of Psalms. Yes. Uh, Psalms 23 the, being the most popular psalm in the book of Psalms. Amen. But I like Psalms because Psalms introduces us to a man by the name of David. Uh, psalms is comprised of many of David's poems, many of David's uh, uh, writings, and many of David's psalms and psalms, or matters of David's heart, if you will. And, and, and it is made up uh, primarily because he is the primary author of psalms. There are some other contributing authors. However, uh, David being the primary one, it is comprised of a compilation of that, the matters of his heart or the expressions of his soul. And I like David. I have a particular bias to David because I like who David is and I like what David represents. I think that David is a very wonderful, very wonderful person. He's a very uh, wonderful case study. I believe that David is an excellent representation of many uh, believers in our many different stages of life. When we look at David, it is, it is through looking at David that we see we, we can, we, that he is a canvas upon which we can paint uh, the picture of a very mighty man of God. Uh, but David is also a, a, a canvas upon which we see we see his falls and we see his triumphs. We are introduced to David as a young man, and through through the study of David, we become engrafted into his life. We become we become intertwined into his life. We get involved in his life, and we watch him grow up, and we watch him mature, we watch him endure, we watch him succeed, we watch him deliver all of Israel. Uh, but then we watch we watch David, we watch him deliver all of Israel, and then we also see him sleep with Uriah's wife. Right. Uh, and so I believe David is an excellent representation to a believer in the body of Christ. Why? Because David is a wonderful representation that even good people, let's stay focused, they can get this out right. Uh, but David is a wonderful representation that even good people or even strong leaders do fall. That's right. right. Uh, but I believe then that it is very important uh, for us to understand that good people do fall uh, and leaders do fall because my concern for the body of Christ is that we put our leaders then on a pedestal and we don't do them the justice of allowing them to be just as human as we are. Amen. And so, when we put leaders on a pedestal, we, we, we give them an unfair disadvantage then, minister, because we expect them to operate, live in, or walk in a capacity or a realm that they are incapable of incapable walking in. Of For lo says the word of God, that behold, all men fall short of the glory of God. Yes. Uh, and so we put our leaders on a pedestal, and the danger then in putting someone, uh, anyone on a pedestal is that you elevate them above you. And so then, when they fall, whatever they fall, whenever they fall, they damage you on the way down. Wow. Why? Because you elevated them above where you are. And so then you victimize yourself because your leader fell and now you are a victim of their shortcoming. Sir. And you Sir. have made yourself victimized and yeah. now you don't love them or respect them or honor Sir. them as a leader, but you you put them on the pedestal in the first place. That's so if good. I were to ask about three or four or five of the leaders in here, if you asked to be a leader, you would probably tell me no. Amen. Uh, because this is not something I signed up for. I did not submit an application for this. I promise I didn't. I didn't swipe my card for it. I didn't, I didn't go on Google and look up how to submit my resume. This is something God called me to. So I didn't ask. I didn't ask. Not at all. So when you put a leader on a pedestal, you give them an unfair disadvantage. And so whenever they fall, you become victimized. Now you find a way to be the victim and make them feel guilty because they damaged you on their way down. But you don't understand that the same grace that they have to have on you when you fall, you have to exercise with your leaders when they stumble too. Talk, talk, sir. 
Yes. And so I like David because he's an excellent leader that shows us that even good people have stumbling blocks. We see David deliver all of Israel. Then we see him sleep with Uriah's wife. And then we see him kill uh, Goliath with, with, with a slingshot and a rock. And then we see him kill uh, one of his most loyal servants because he had to cover up one of his mistakes. And we see, we see David, we see David go uh, and, and deliver the people of God. But then we also find David lying and cheating and sleeping with different women. We find David, uh, we find him tossed uh, with, with, with the mountains and valleys. And we get through, through the study of David, we get intertwined with his life. We become engrafted. We become involved. We begin to get excited when he is rising. And we begin to be disappointed when he's falling. When we study the story of David, the timeline of David, we begin to get involved there. We begin to try and predict his next move and, and talk to David like he would do a lifetime movie and say, David, you go this way. Go this way. And David, go that way. And don't do that. David, do that because, because we get so involved uh, 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 in his life. We Sir. get so involved. And so I love David. I have a particular bias to David because I like what David represents. But David makes a, a bold declaration that the body of Christ uh, likes to echo and likes to quote. But my concern then for the body of Christ is that we do not honor then uh, the, the quote or we do not honor what we are quoting of David and we do not do him justice for what he declared. That's All right. For lo, David comes to us, the psalmic writer. David comes to us in Psalms 34. And he says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And I submit to you that that is one of the most popular psalms uh, in the book. Uh, and we like to quote it all the time. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And we repeat it so the church gets excited. And we say it three times so the organ can kick in. And then everybody starts hollering and bucking because I'm going to bless them at all times. Uh, but, but, but we never honor, we never honor what we're saying. That's good. Because in order to bless the Lord at all times, it is to understand that you are blessing the Lord when you are uh, on the mountain and you are blessing him in the valley. Yeah. And so then it is to bless the Lord or honor him or reverence him or give him praise upon the principle of who he is and not the conditions of what he's done for you. And so, uh, when you learn how to give God glory upon the principle of who he is, and not the conditions of what you see him doing as according to what you would desire, uh, you tap into a new, a deeper, and a more profound revelation or relationship with the Lord. Because I'm now honoring him simply because of your auspices, not because of your action. Uh, because, lo, there are going to be some times in your life where God is going to do some things that are contrary to that that you would desire. Uh, but if you truly honor the method of the scripture, it does not matter what God is doing. I'm All still right. going to praise you and serve yes. you because of who you are. Yes. The song said, if you never do another thing, you've already done enough. That's and I worship yeah. you because of who you are, not for what you've done. And so it is this then that we that we have to honor that mandate when we quote that scripture. It is to bless him upon the principle and not the condition. That's the Bible right. mandates us to do that a lot That's of good, times. Sir. The Bible mandates That's us good. to do things upon the principle and not That's upon the condition. Kimani, why is this so baffling? Because we were in Sunday school and, and Evangelist Darby has been doing a wonderful uh, series on love, uh, and, 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 and when he asked the Sunday school class, what did love mean to you? Everybody was ready to go to 1 Corinthians, I believe it's the 13th chapter, and say, you know, but love is patient, and love is kind, and love suffers long, and love envieth not, and love is not puffed up, and love keepeth no evil of wrongdoing. We were all so ready, and then he said, but do you do that? And the church got quiet. Wow. Because, because the, uh, to, to love upon the mandate of God's word is to love upon the principle of love and not the conditions thereof. And so someone had submitted the answer that we are uh, to show love based upon what we are receiving from another person. And I would like to submit the differ because if we are reciprocating love simply uh due to the love that we receive from another, there are some people I would be able to treat ornery and nasty and Amen. evil and low yeah. down because they treat me ornery and nasty and evil and low down. Right. Uh, but I'm so glad that God calls his remnant uh, to love upon the principle of his word and not the conditions of the tainted people. Wow. Because people have That's no good, accountability sir. nowadays. They have no reverence and they don't know how to love upon the principle of love and not the conditions thereof because the moment I love you but the moment you offend me, I no longer know how to show you love because I now don't like what you did. And, 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 and we can't show people love because if I don't like what you do, now I don't love you. Or I don't know how to show you love because I don't like something that you did. And and, and so we can't separate. We have a dichotomous uh, uh, conjoining then uh, of not being able to love somebody and dislike something about the person. Uh, it is it is it is essential that we learn how to love upon the principle of love uh, and, and not the conditions of love. Just because somebody treats you on don't mean you have carte blanche 
to treat them back the same way, homo. Oh. If we did that, how could we honor the mandate of the word that says, bless them that curse you and do good for them that despitefully use you and love them that hate you. If you hate me, I'm mandated by the word to love you. I can't yes. treat you like you treat me. If you curse me, I got to bless you. I'm mandated by the word. If you despitefully use you, I still got to do use me. I still got to do good to you. Why? Because his word says so. I can't, I can't, I can't mistreat you because you have treated me a certain way. It is this then that we learn how to love upon the principle of love and not the condition thereof. For no love is truly a ministry. Uh, and love is something you have to pour into and you have to dismiss your emotions when you're trying to honor the principle and not the condition. For no, the condition wow. will affect your emotion, but the principle supersedes Sir, your emotion and causes you to love Sir. someone upon the commandment of the word and how Christ would love you. I right. that for a moment how how tainted, how, how off we would be if God loved us like we love other people. Sir. The Bible lets us know, uh, he says, God forgive us as we forgive our trespasses. Wow. If God truly forgave us as we forgave those, there will be some sins that we were going to hell for right yeah. now. Because yeah. if we had to, if God treated us for about three right. seconds, how we treated other people, we would be in hell right now. I wonder how off the church would be if, if when we offended God, he decided not to love us anymore. I wonder how off the church would be if when we did not honor God's word, he would he would turn his back against us. I wonder how, 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 how far off track the church would be if every time I disappointed God, he took his hand off me. I wonder how off I would be. I wonder how jacked up I would be. I wonder how many years out the womb I would have been dead when every time I lied, God took his hand off me. I wonder. I wonder how off I would be if God didn't forgive me because I didn't forgive you. I wonder. I wonder how quick I'd be sentenced to hell because, because God has to treat me like I treat you and God wow. knows how to love me and not like my spirit. But because I don't like your spirit, I don't love you. And I'm so wow. glad that God is not like man. Wow. Yes. Come on. Watch your voice, sir. You're Hello. Good. Hello. If God was like man in hell, would I have lifted up my eyes many years ago, not yes. minutes after being out the womb? Because Amen. there was a time that I blatantly heard what God said and went no. the other way. There, there was a time that I left the church early to go do what I wanted to do. There, there, there was a time that I was on the pulpit, had on this good here clergy collar yesterday that looked good too. But the moment I took it off, I was going to cuss you out for about three minutes. There was, a, there was a time I was having sex on Saturday and then shot on Sunday. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. There was a time. There was a time I was doing anything and everything with anybody and anybody and their grandmother too. Uh, but I still wanted God to honor his promises to me. I wonder yeah. wow. for a moment wow. Wow. just wow. how off we My would God. be, just how destitute, just how desolate, uh, just how, how, how bad, how sad uh, the conditions of the church would be if God were to honor us, uh, how we honor the people of God. Please have your seats. This is just the drink. I got to get you an appetizer. Uh, 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 I wonder, I'm so glad that God, I'm so glad that is not God that God is not like man because lo, if God were like man, I'd be I'd be a wretch undone. I'd be I'd be in hell somewhere. I wouldn't I wouldn't have what I need. I wouldn't have His oh, grace and His mercy uh, because men are people who don't like to oh. give grace. The moment you offend me and you do it two or three times, I'm ready. I'm done now. I cut all ties with uh -huh. you now. But I'm yeah. so glad because I know Minister Tiger that I have offended God on more than three occasions, yeah. but Amen. He is still kept yes. his hand of grace and mercy upon me. Pastor Yemma lets us know that he giveth and giveth and giveth more grace. And I'm so glad that I serve a God who has an overflow or an abundance of grace because I will stand in front of you and tell you I need his grace. Do I have a witness in here that will just holler back and say I need his grace. I know I know I need his grace. There's no goodness of my own. Has been left to my own understanding and my own will and hear what I have been. I need, I need his grace because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I'd be. If it had not been his grace, I would have lost my mind when I was messing with him, her, and them too. I would have lost my mind when I was smoking this and drinking that. I would have lost my mind when I was acting Ari and sitting on the front row of the church. I would have lost my mind. I thank God for his grace. If it had not been for the grace of God. My God! I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'd be. I got to, I got to go. I got to go. I, I just don't know where I'd be if it hadn't been for his grace. And so I'm so glad that then that God that God is a God of grace and he is a God of mercy. Now I must caution you now to not take advantage of his grace for lo, the Bible says it is given unto every man a measure of grace. And anything that is measured has a beginning and an end. Yeah. All right. All right. I had to take a sidebar that you know. But I like I like David because
This declaration teaches us how to act upon the principle of God's word and not the conditions of the people or the conditions of what we feel. We have to, we have to go above and beyond uh, uh, what we feel and we have to go above and beyond uh, uh, what it is we see and what it is we think should happen because I'm going to be the first one to tell you that God is going to pull some moves on you or he's going to have you make some turns in your life that you would not have made uh, for yourself. And if you can't be faithful uh, when, when things are not the way you would have done them, you will never have a successful relationship with God because you have to be committed beyond that that you agree with. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why the teachers to say, come what made my answer is still yes, Lord, because there's going to be some stuff. I'm going to say, Lord, I really don't understand what you're doing. I don't understand why you would have me take this turn. I don't understand how I got to this predicament in my life, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad that God sees and knows all, and his ways are higher than mine, and thoughts are higher than mine, because some decisions I would have made, he would not have made for me, but I'm grateful that sometimes he, ass he assumes the auspices over me uh, 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 and makes my decisions on my behalf, because in my finitude, I wouldn't be able able to decide that that is beneficial and that that would uh, that would do me how God would have my life to be done and so I'm so glad uh, that he is a God that, that that directs my life and orchestrates my life and guides my steps for lo the steps of any good man have been ordered by the Lord. I'm so glad I have a church in here. And so I like David because he shows us then that, uh, that, that that we have to honor the Lord when situations would warrant the opportunity to not do so. Uh, I was wrestling with the word on this morning because I did not know excuse me, how exactly to deliver it, but the Lord confirmed that every night of convocation, and so if I have anybody here from the Christ Apostolic Assembly, you will know that this word has been confirmed because I found that the body of Christ has been in a position where we are between uh, the promise and the product thereof. Uh, and oftentimes, between the promise and the product, we try and decide, we try to understand what God is doing because I don't understand, God, that you made me a promise here, but I, and I know what I should be expecting, but I don't see uh, what it is you promised me, nor do I see how I'm going to get to it. And I, I, I thought it interesting that, that David too uh, has to endure this because David, you know, was anointed king to, to be king over Israel at 15 years old, yeah. but he never inherited his kingdom until he was 30. Wow. I said, God, how is it, why is it that you anointed him at 15, but his, you, you did not appoint him until 30? He said, because sometimes I give you the anointing so you know what I'm going to do for you, but you have to hold on to the anointing until I get to the appointing. Uh, because sometimes there's going to be a gap between the anointing and the appointing of a thing where I have to work on you so that when I appoint you to that that I anointed you for, you'll be able to survive and sustain in that that you have been appointed to. For lo, if God gave us everything that He promised us, when He promised it to us, we would not serve Him the same way. We would not. We would not be able to honor what we, what He has given us. We would take then what He had trusted us with, because our character would not have been refined, our integrity would not have been boosted, our our mindset would not have been changed. He had to anoint David at 15, uh, yeah. but He had to give David time to grow and mature. He had to take him through some stuff. He had to take him through some pitfalls, and He had to take him through some mountainous ascensions, and then He had to take him. Through through some Valais experiences, then he had to he had to work David, and he had to break him down like a like the prophet has to do. He had to build, break him down and then build him back up. And when David thought he got his bearings, the Lord broke him again, and then he had to build him back up. And David thought he got his bearings again, and God broke him again. And he had to build. He said this series of breaking of things. Uh, it's almost like a, a a potter would do some clay. I have I have to shake the clay. I have to mold the clay. But when I see something that's not going to be beneficial to the final product, yes. I have to break it down again. Yes. And then I have Start all over and I have to mold it again and I have to shape it again and I keep pumping the wheel and I'm sitting here and I'm pumping the wheel and I'm pumping and I'm shaping the clay and then there's a bubble so I break it down again and I mash it down and I then I pump the wheel again and I'm molding it and I'm molding it and I see I see a pocket there that's not going to look good on the final product so I gotta break it down again and then I keep molding it and molding it and this is what God has to do to the body of Christ and the problem is the body of Christ does not want to acquiesce to the process of the molding. Yeah, that's it. For lo, when God makes a move that we do not agree with, we're ready to forsake him. Ready to go. That's right. That's, that's good. That's I've good. never seen Talk good, sir. such a generation. That's it, sir. That will forsake the Lord All right. when situations are not that that are your preference. Preach the truth. I, I, I was sitting there wrestling with the theme for Harvest Fast and he gave me the harvest of the faithful because, because this year, and my overseer confirmed me on Tuesday night, but this year uh, in the church has warranted the opportunity to give up. And many leaders have taken the opportunity uh, to give up and have given up. 
But God says, I've called you to be faithful even when the opportunity is warranted to you. Because, lo, every time you have an opportunity, it is not ordained for you to take it. Every time somebody opens their legs for you to have sex, it don't mean you got to go have sex with them. I may not get no amen, so maybe you still do it, but uh, every time, every time that opportunity is presented to you, it does not mean that you're supposed to take it. So just because, just because the situation gets heavy in the church, uh, don't mean you can just leave the church now because you can't just give up. I've never seen a generation that, that, that just believes that we can just tell God when we're going to serve him and when we're going to yes. be faithful. God, because I got it all going on, I'll serve you and I'll pay my tithes and I'll come to church and I'll serve the ministry. But the moment, the moment I disagree with the way I was rebuked over the pulpit today, the moment, the moment I disagree uh -huh. with the, the situation the church is in, the moment, the moment I disagree with this relationship in my life, I stop serving you how I'm supposed to serve you and I stop doing what I'm supposed to be doing to you because I now dictate to you the conditions upon which I'll give you bread. Of you, how arrogant of you, how, 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 how indignant of you to think that you can tell God when it is he deserves the glory. Jesus. How ornery of you, how how prideful of you, how stuck up are you that you think you are qualified or in the position to let God know when he deserves your praise. How, 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 how indignant of you to think that you are qualified to let God know the conditions upon which you bless his name. Oh God, as long as, as, long as I'm, I'm in agreement with how my life is, I'll give you glory. But the moment I disagree, now I got an attitude, God, but oh, but you still like the God when you need him and you still yes. need his grace. And you still want him to honor his promise. But you don't want to serve him in the midst of the situation. God said, Where is the faithful remnant? My God. Where he is? Come on. Where is the remnant? You're yeah. talking good. That 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 would serve me when situations are not how they would have ordained. That's right. Just Watch your That's voice. It. That's it. Where is the remnant that would that would keep my covenant or keep their covenant with me when yes. when the conditions are not conducive to their desire. Yes. That's good. Yes. That's yes. Good. Where's the remnant who would who would submit themselves under my auspices because I did mandate it by word that any man if he wants to come after me let him follow me take up his cross uh, deny himself and follow me but we have a church that likes to sing I'm chasing after you until you make a move I don't want to follow you and I I stop chasing. Yes. <laughs> You say no matter what I have to do, cause I need you. Uh uh, you weren't supposed to go that way. And then we stop serving them. Hello. And we stop being faithful. Yeah. And we start doing what we want to do. But we still want God to honor his promises to us. Yes. yes. How 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 selfish of us is it that we should honor, that we should expect God to honor his promises to us, but but we don't want to honor uh, our covenant with him. Wow. And so and so I began to look here. Please be seated. I'm going home in about 6.3 seconds. But 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 I was looking here at Psalms 37 and 25, and David says, "I have been young, and I now I'm old, and I'm I'm so glad, Evander's daughter, that you told me I didn't have to be deep today, cause I'm not gonna get too deep tonight. Y'all ain't gonna drown till evening, cause I just got a good word from the Lord. Uh, uh, but he said, but I'm going. I'm in, I'm in the kiddie pool tonight. He said, he said, I have been young, and now I'm old. And, and, and yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And as I read the scripture, I said, okay. I said, God, I don't understand what's so deep about that. What's so revelational? What am I supposed to give the people who are stuck between the promise and the product? David, I know David says, I have been young and now I'm old because he was qualified. I believe David was qualified to make that statement that he was young and he has been old because we look at his life and we see him in his younger and we see him in his latter. But, and I believe he's qualified to make that statement. But I said, God, what is it that I'm supposed to give, uh, give to the people on tonight? I said, I, I, you, I don't see the revelation in the scripture. I don't see what's so profound. I don't see uh, what's going to get them. But he's, he said, Kimani, you searching too deep. It's right in front of your face. I said, okay, God, what you're saying? So I read it again. I said, I have been young, and I now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The operative word there is righteous. Yes. All right. And word, the, word the, the secondary word there is seed. So 
What you're saying, he said. He said it did. There, there, there is, there is a, 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 a um, something. There's a mandate you have to honor then to qualify for my faithfulness Sir. to this scripture. Sir, work your text. I said, God, what you said. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Work your text. He, he who is faithful to oh. me. He, he who is honoring my principles. He, he who is honoring my word. He, he who is not throwing in the towel every time they, they feel like the situation wants the opportunity to do so to the righteous. To he who is adhering to the word of God, to he who is acquiescing to my commandments, he to him am I faithful, uh, but to yeah. those that don't know me, I'm not obligated to. Not obligated. Yeah. Yeah. I said, God, what you're saying? He said, because I've not seen my seed begging bread. Even if it is my seed has my bloodline. Yeah. But there are people yeah. in my church who don't have my bloodline, but they want me to obligate myself to them. Wow. That's I said, God, what you wow. what you That's saying? Good. He said, He wow. said, you want me to obligate myself to you. You want me to fulfill the promises when you ask me to, but you don't want to do nothing. I ask. You're not my seed. I don't know you. Wow. I don't know who I, you are. Hey, because on, because like you treat your friends, you don't use me until that's convenient for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Because like you use your relationships, you don't you don't like to get involved with me until it's something you want to reap from me. You yeah. you, you uh, treat our relationship like you do your phone bill and you pay the minimum of balance to yeah. keep the line open. So when you want to make a phone call, you got service. But but if you're not even making no phone calls, you don't want to pay the bill because because you only like to use me when it's convenient for you. But God said I'm not I'm not dropping my anointing, I'm not dropping my oil, I'm not dropping my mantle on people who who only use me for their convenience. I drop it on those. Who are conducive for my glory? Wow! And so, and so I said, God, I don't understand. I said, What? What you trying to say? He said, They they want me to. They want me to fulfill my promise, but but they don't they don't want to honor my word. They want me to fulfill my promises, but they don't wanna they don't wanna uh, they don't wanna honor my principles. They don't they want me to fulfill my promises, but the the moment between the promise and the point of that they disagree with, they like to go uh, and retreat and they like to do their own thing. But yet they still want me to be faithful to them, and yet they still want me to give them what I promised them. But God says I'm not obligated to the promises when you have breached the contract. Yeah. You breached the contract. I, I, I promised you this uh, uh, because you were in a position to reap the harvest that I was going to give you. But now you have withdrawn your seed from the soil and you you have begun to take then your garden. And now now your garden is not uh, uh, is not uh, conducive for what I'm trying to give you. And, and you have breached the contract and the covenant I made with you. And now you want me to be faithful to you and, and honor the promises to you and give you a glory that would kill you if I gave it to you because because you don't know how to serve me right you want me to bless you with a church and you want to lead people but the, the, but the moment but the moment the, 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 the life is hard you ready to forsake me but you want me to trust my members with you you want me you want me to give you a marriage but but you're not faithful in your own relationship and, but 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 you still want me to give you covenant you want me to give you lots of money but i give you 20 dollars and you still don't pay your tithes you you, you want me to give you a, a house but you can't even manage what you got now you can't even give Clean. You want me, you want me to, you want me to bless you with a lot of money, but you never give to nobody. You never sow into nobody's life. You never buy nobody else something to eat. You, you want me to make you a pastor with 300,000 members, but you can't sow the six you got right here. You, 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 you want me to, you want me to bless you with a marriage and a, a covenant relationship, but you still cheat on everybody with Tom, Dick, and Harry. And you still want me to trust you with the man of your dreams, and, and, and you want Boaz, but you don't know how to be real. You, 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 you want to be Boaz, but you want to Boaz, but you don't, you don't know how to be Ruth. You don't know how to glean in the fields. You don't, you don't know how to serve. And then, and then Boaz, you want to root, but you don't know how to claim somebody when they've been wounded. Ruth was wounded and broken, and, and, and she had some stuff from, from, from her past marriage. Her husband died, and Boaz had to work with her and get her delivered. But you're not ready to invest into nobody and get them delivered. But you still need to trust you with a wife at the moment you don't love her. My principles, but you don't honor my principles. You, wow. 
You want me to honor my promises, but, but you can't honor my principles and, and you get mad at me when you get mad at me when I don't do what it is you want me to do. But have you ever stopped to think that that yeah, you don't do what it is I want you to do? And I know that I'm not trying to throw it in your face, but over rebuke is better than secret love. But I'm trying to let you know that that I'm still been faithful to you, but you're still acting evil toward me. And how unfair is it for you to think uh, obligate me to serving you, but you can't obligate yourself to serving me? Uh, and now you're in a position where you're caught in between uh, a rock and a hard place because now, now when you would do good evil is always present because you never should have got out of place in the first place and now that you got out of position you can't get back in position and you got delivered one time but you didn't stay delivered so now you got seven more demons in your head the first time and so it's hard to get out this time because now now when I got delivered from one demon I got delivered from eight demons and then I got delivered a second time but I went back into it and so now you had one demon and then you had eight demons now you got 19 demons because you don't know how to get delivered and stay delivered you know that I'm, I'm, I'm the God that, that knows how to make the good oh, and the bad work around for your favor. And, and I'm trying to say that all things work together for the good of them that love you. And I know you've been molested, but I'm telling you that there's a testimony in the middle of that. And I know you've been raped, and I'm trying to say there's a testimony in the middle of that. And, and, I'm, and I'm trying to make sure that you understand that there is a deliverance to somebody else through my delivering you. But because you don't let me deliver you, you can't deliver her. And now you've hindered her progress because you stopped your progress. And, and now you never... Talk 
looking good. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on, preach to me. And so I said, Lord, preach to me, sir. I said, what do I tell the people? Good Lord from Zion. Yes. I said, God, what do I tell the people? I said, because there is a people who are torn between the, the promise and the product. And I said, Lord, what do I what do I give to the people of God? And he said, Can I tell the people that between the promise and the product, I'm trying to bring promotion. Yeah. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, there are some things that I couldn't give you when I promised it to you. But by the time I was ready to produce the promise, I would have given it to you because I would have promoted you where you were able to withstand with, with the conditions that were going to come with the promise. Because when, when, when I give you the promise, everybody's not going to be in your corner and everybody ain't going to be rejoicing for you. And everybody who said they love you ain't going to be really happy for you. When you get blessed, they're going to be jealous and trying to curse you. And all I'm trying to do is make it, is, 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 is refine your character and teach you how to love them that curse you before they actually curse you because when I give you what I'm about to give you they really all gonna curse you you gonna have to learn how to smile on their face and, and love them back and if you just if you just do trust me if you just adhere to my word if you just believe that I'm able if you just believe that I didn't let some demon get loose in your life and take your life to hell if you believe that I had a divine plan in the midst of all the transitions that I can give you what I promised you but you have to trust me in the midst of it I know I know you think that you you made the wrong way and I know you think that that I messed up but I know you think that I that I made a mistake and I know you think that, that I haven't seen your conditions and I know you think that I haven't looked at your life closely and I know you think that I've forgotten you but I have not forgotten you I called you friend did you forget that I called you my friend and I wouldn't forget the, 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 the labor that you've given and I wouldn't forget your faithfulness and I wouldn't forget your diligence but all I need you to do is serve me so I can give you the product of the promise and I'm just here to testify to about three or four people I was supposed to go home this early but I got to go home now I got to tell about three or four people in here that God is about to release the product of the promise but he's trying to promote you in between time and you've got to learn how to give God glory in the midst of the two I know you're stuck between two gardens you don't know when you're coming and when you're going but God said if you trust my auspices and if you trust my ways I'll be able to give you the desires of your heart but you've got to trust your heart to me and not to everybody else because I'm trying to produce that that I promised you and you would say faithful in the midst of the transition that I'm trying to bring promotion for lo I'm trying to bring you a promotion that you don't even qualify for but I'm so glad that the apostle reminded us the other night that God does not call the qualified but he qualifies the called he might have been messy when he called me but watch me bounce back from this I might have been down out and out when he called me but watch me get up you might have laughed when I fell but watch me get up and I'm going to look at you and show you the same love that I've been showing you all along because I know that I've got a promise from the Lord do I have one or two people who know they got a promise from the Lord if you got a promise clap your hands and say yes I got to go home here, but I gotta tell you that God is about to release the promise. He's about to release the product of the promise. And that that he has promised you, you're about to see it come to pass. God said, I'm not a man that I should lie never mind. The son of man that I should have been tell me when I said it. And I did not do it when did I speak it. And it did not come to pass. I'm a God who honored my words. And all I need you to do is be faithful in the midst of it, for I that began a good work in you, is faithful to perform it until the day of my return, and if I haven't come back yet, all I want you to do is stay faithful, if I haven't came and got you yet, all I want you to do is stay faithful, if I haven't called your name, I just want you to stay faithful, God said stay faithful in the midst of hell, stay faithful in the midst of persecution, I believe the word of God and the word said I'm troubled on every side yet not distressed I am perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken found but not destroyed always without the end the work of the Lord I got a work that I'm working on and he's got a work that he's working in me Lord, complete 
your work and while you're completing it, I'll stand right here and I will be faithful and I won't waver and I won't move. But I am planted like a tree by the rivers of water and I am no giant and I will not be moved. I don't care what the circumstance says.
pray. I believe looking on my heart. I believe in the blood of Jesus. I believe I bind depression. Because I believe I bind depression. Because I believe I bind anxiety. Because I believe I bind the fear. Because I believe God has not given a spirit of fear. But power. Holy Ghost power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall receive power. I got power over my mind. I got power over this situation. I got power over my Give him glory. 
upon the principle, it's not upon the conditions, but upon the principle. Come on, give him glory. We going home, but come on, give him glory. Give him glory. Oh, yeah. Shut your mouth, 